Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today. We greatly appreciate your time. My name is Allison Westcott. I am the Customer Service and Marketing Associate at Immunochemistry Technologies, and I will be moderating our webinar. Your phone has been muted, however, we encourage and welcome your questions. Please type your question into the chat dialog box on the right side of your screen and select Send to Host. If you have any technical difficulties during the webinar, please also send those to host. It is my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Sally Head Dahlquist. In this webinar, Sally will provide background information on Flevo, what it is and how it works, and the four Flevo kits we have available for purchase. Thank you, Sally. Oh, thanks for that nice introduction. And thanks to Kristen Polly and Allison Westcott for managing our webinar today. And thanks, of course, to all of you who are joining us today. I'm going to tell you about Flevo, our apoptosis probe that can be injected in vivo to image cell death. In fact, here's a colorful picture of a mouse imaged with a Lycor pearl small animal imager. This mouse has a colorectal tumor a xenograft, and it's labeled with NIR747. More on that experiment later. In fact, I've got quite a few experiments to show you. Uh, we also just got back from the neuroscience meeting in San Diego this month, where we met a lot of researchers who are looking at brains and neurons, so I have more of those examples. And if you're tuning in today after visiting us at the show, thanks for coming. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, so you, you will be able to view it again and share it with your colleagues. Thanks for joining us. Um, I am Sally Head Dahlquist, and I'm the president of ICT. I have a degree in genetics and cell biology from the University of Minnesota, so that makes me a golfer, <laughs> and an MBA from Cardinal Stritch University. I started at immunochemistry back in 1996 as a laboratory assistant. Oh, it doesn't seem that long. I was one of the first employees, but the founders couldn't pay me, so they gave me stock instead. And fast forward 20 years later, I bought them out when they retired in 2016. So I started out as a lab rat and have been involved in every aspect of growing the company, including the development of Flevo. And there are now over 2,100 pro publications using our product products and about 100 of them using Flevo. And I'm excited to tell you about it today. Flevo is a reagent you can use to assess apoptotic cell death via caspase activity in whole animals in vivo. You just inject it IV and let it circulate about an hour. It's cell permeant, non-cytotoxic, and readily enters and exits cells as it's pumped throughout the body. If there are active caspase enzymes inside a cell, Flevo will form an irreversible covalent bond with a caspase and thereby inhibiting further enzymatic activity. The bound Flevo probe will remain inside the cell as long as the cell membrane is intact. Any unbound Flevo is removed from the circulation of the animal in about an hour. In about three to four hours, it tends to get flushed through the liver and kidneys. Apoptotic cells retain a higher concentration of Flevo and fluoresce brighter than non-apoptotic cells, allowing for easy imaging. In fact, um, in this picture, FAM Flevo is been used to detect apoptosis in the brain. That's the yellow-green cells to monitor damage from diabetes. Uh, Flevo crosses the blood-brain barrier and the retinal barrier, and we've used it in rats, mice, birds, and other animals. And today I'll explain more and run through some experiments using Flevo. We have four different options. Uh, FAM is carboxyfluorescein in green, SR is sulfurotamine in red, and some near-infrared ones using 690 and 747. With Flevo, you can easily determine how the animal is responding to treatment and adjust the dose, time, and other experimental conditions accordingly. Uh, before we dive a little deeper into Flevo, I'll quickly tell you a little bit about ICT, our products, and then share the experiments. There's a lot of exciting work being done, and I hope that Flevo will be able to help you. ICT was founded in 1994 by a couple of scientists who just wanted to make a living doing R&D. And since then, we've developed some really cool products. So we've been around for 25 years and are now officially certified as woman-owned and operated. In fact, most of our staff are women. And uh, that's me. I'm Sally. I'm the owner. And we're located in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is right in the middle of the US, kind of up north next to Canada. So it's really starting to get cold and snowy now here in November. We originally started as a service company developing ELISA tests for other people like an AIDS test or some assays for food safety. And then we started selling our ELISA buffers like coat buffers, block buffers, conjugate stabilizers, 
So if you need to build a better assay, give us a call. We have everything you need from start to finish to make an ELISA. And we also branched out then to start studying cell viability, particularly apoptosis in whole living cells for a variety of different cast bases and other targets. Using our kits, you can monitor cells in vitro, in vivo, and in real time, including FLEVO for use in whole animals. Our products are used by researchers all over the world. We have about 40 worldwide distributors, and they're highly cited. Like I said, we have 2,100 worldwide publications and about 100 papers for FLEVO. And we'd love to share this data with you and hear about the experiments you're doing. If you need any more details or questions, please contact us and we'll be happy to send you some papers. Um, we study cell death, which really is vital for life. And when controlled, cell death is good for you and helps maintain our bodies, grow and remodel. When uncontrolled, cell death is very bad for you and leads to disease like cancer, where cells are growing out of control and they should be dying, or neurodegeneration, where cells are dying too soon and they should be living. In diseases like a heart attack or stroke, there's a, a lot of tissue damage, and being able to assess the extent of damage can provide valuable diagnostic information. And with cancer, being able to image if and when tumors are responding to chemotherapy will lead to a better cure, and hopefully faster cures too. Program cell death is good for you, and that is apoptosis. Apoptosis helps animals grow and remodel, and in plants, you can see it happen when the leaves fall off the trees. Apoptosis is triggered by caspase enzymes, which dismantle the cell from within. Caspases are the hallmark of apoptosis. They are a family of cysteine proteases that serve as critical mediators in the apoptotic pathway. Caspases are the enzymes that start dismantling the cell from within and are an early and definitive indicator of programmed cell death. Using FLEVO to detect caspases means that you only label cells in the, presence of, in the process of dying. And the reaction with FLEVO is fast. It starts happening within 15 minutes of injection and continues as it circulates throughout the body. FLEVO does not react with proforms or inactive forms of the enzymes, uh, which you might get with antibodies or some other reagents, so you don't get false positives. It's non-cytotoxic with minimal background stating, and as a biomarker of apoptosis, caspases are a relevant molecular target that can be accurately detected with FLEVO. Um, FLEVO stands for fluorescence in vivo. It is a labeled pancas inhibitor, which is injected directly into the animal. It's non-cytotoxic and binds preferentially to the active cysteine site, or the active site cysteine of caspases, which enables you to visualize the caspase activity in vivo. As illustrated here, the FLEVO probes consist of three key components. There's the um, labeled reporter tag here, in green, um, linked to a caspase targeting peptide sequence, which in this case is VAD, valine, alanine, or aspartic acid, and an FMK reactive group, which actually helps form a covalent bond with the active caspase. We currently have four options and are always developing more. Like I said, two of these are um, fluorescence, the FAM and sulforotamine, and then we have some near-infrared ones. The FMK reactive group, which is the yellow right here, forms a covalent bond with the catalytic sites on the active caspase enzyme, which inhibits the enzyme, meaning that it can no longer bind or cleave to any other peptide. It becomes inactive. The FLEVO is not cleaved by the caspase. It's always fluorescent, and once bound to the caspase, it is retained inside the cell, and the signal stays within the cell. Any unbound tracer is removed by the physiological flux within the live animal. Essentially, the circulation of the animal pumps FLEVO throughout the body and in and out of cells. As long as the cell membrane remains intact, you can specifically identify which cells are apoptotic or not. The animals and tissues are ready for analysis and no further staining is necessary unless you want to. Excised tissues can be counterstained with other reagents and fixed or frozen. A FLEVO is a molecular imaging tool and as a biomarker of apoptosis, Caspases are a relevant molecular target that can be applied in many different areas of research, drug discovery, and in the future to monitor disease and treatments for human patients, as you will see in the examples.
in the future, imaging apoptosis in vivo will have clinical di diagnostic importance. Apoptosis is a key event in diseases like cancer and inflammation, and using molecular tools and biomarkers like SLEVO, we can generate appreciable, better data to help manage disease, which ultimately will lead to faster cures, personalized medicine, and of course, lower health healthcare costs. As we pursue our goal of curing disease, we can use FLEVO to help our, all of our R&D efforts. We currently have four FLEVO probes that are used in different wavelengths for analysis. Um, we have the FAM, which is carboxyfluorescine, in green fluorescence, and then the sulforotamine uses red fluorescence. And we have the two near-infrared probes, the 690 and the 747. And these NIR probes also have a free dye control available that you can use uh, as a control. And I've listed just a couple of the instruments here that you can use for analysis that are compatible with, free, with FLEVO, and there's always more out there. So check it out. We're always trying to um, analyze them with newer instruments. FLEVO is really e easy to use. You just reconstitute it, dilute it, and inject it into the animal. Then there are a variety of ways that you can co-label the tissue and image the sample. It's really versatile for all, use with all types of tissues, animals, and different applications. There are many ways that FLEVO can be administered. We typically inject about 50 to 100 microliters per injection. injection. And we let that circulate 15 minutes to an hour or more. People have let it inject for six hours or 15 hours, 22 hours, or days. FLEVO typically clears from circulation about an hour and clears from the liver and kidneys in three to four hours so you can re-inject in the same animal. But it will re the signal will be retained inside the cell as long as the cell membrane is intact. Because FLEVO is a direct stain, it eliminates any false positives that may arrive from manipulation of the tissue. This gives a true representation of the induction of apoptosis in vivo as a result of the experimental condition. Animals can be analyzed with a whole animal imager, or they can be perfused and fixed, or sacrificed and the tissues excised. The tissues can be viewed directly from a window chamber system or other accessible cavity, or thin tissue sections can be prepared after sacrificing the animal. Tissues can be counterstained with other reagents, such as missile, which is red, or DAPI, that's blue, and fixed or frozen for future analysis. Uh, for example, the positive signal can be quantified by excising the tissue and analyzing cells with a flow cytometer. As with any experiment, we have to have control, and we suggest an animals with and without your treatment or with and without FLEVO, and for NIR, you can also include the free dye control. You may have one set of animals that are not induced to undergo apoptosis or have the negative control condition and one set of animals that receive a treatment or have the positive control condition. You can look at different doses of treatments at different time points. Uh, let's take a look at some of the experiments. I'll show you some data first from our FAM FLEVO kit. It uses carboxyfluorescein, which is green fluorescence, and excites at 488 and emits at 515. You can analyze samples with anything that reads within that range. Uh, this is one of the very first experiments we did using FAMFLEVO. This is one breast cancer tumor imaged before and after treatment. It was grown on the back of a mouse, which you can see here through this window chamber system, and monitored um, the mouse was injected IV via the tail vein before treatment, which is here, and after treatment with arsenic trioxide. Um, ATO is a chemotherapeutic reagent. Um, Pictures were taken 30 minutes after FLEVO was injected. And from this experiment, we can easily see that chemotherapy is working because the dying apoptotic tumor cells turn green. We can also specifically identify which tumor cells are dying. In the before image on the left, we typically see anywhere from 6 to 10% of cells that are undergoing apoptosis naturally without any induction. So you'll always see a small amount of background cells. And to confirm these results, we dissociated the tumor and ran the cells on a flow cytometer. And we saw a five-fold increase in, we saw a five-fold increase in detectable apoptosis using FIBO. Apoptosis peaked about three hours after ATO treatment, 
and remain noticeable 24 hours after the treatment. The FLEVO reliably demonstrated anti-cancer drug activity in normal and living normal and malignant tissue. In a related experiment, we looked at two different tumors with, over here, and without chemotherapy. Again, the mouse on the, they were examined through a, a window chamber system, and the mouse on the, the left was given a placebo, and the mouse on the right was treated with arsenic trioxide to induce apoptosis. After three hours, FLEVO was injected, and sections were made and visualized on a microscope at 10x. Again, we can easily see that chemotherapy is working because dying apoptotic tumor cells turn green here. Once optimized for a clinical setting, uh, FLEVO could be used to determine if chemotherapy is working in human patients. Here we're looking at ischemia in the liver. Um, segmented normal thermic ischemia of the liver was induced for two hours. And then six hours post-reperfusion, FAMFLEVO was injected into the portal veins of the rats and circulated for only 10 minutes. Then they prepared five micron cryosections and counterstained the nuclei in blue with DAPI. A bright green signal from FAMFLEVO is clearly seen in hepatocytes containing active cast bases um, distributed around this vessel on the ischemic condition on the right compared to the control condition on the left. Oh, this is the picture we saw earlier. And again, here we're looking at brain sections. FLEVO crosses the blood-brain barrier and was used to study brain damage in diabetic rats. In the left control rat, and on the right is the STZ diabetic rat that's eight weeks old. 30 minutes before sacrificing the animals, BAM FLEVO was injected IV, and then 20 micron frozen sections of the periaqueductal gray, which is the PAG, part of the brain that controls your pain sensation, were prepared and counterstained with NISL, which is red fluorescent, to identify all the neurons. So the red here are all neurons versus the ones that have this yellow-green. These are the apoptotic neurons that fluoresce green with FAMPLEVO. In this model, diabetic animals show greater levels of caspase activity in the periaqueductal gray than the control animals. As you can tell, that diabetes is affecting your brain. Here again, we're also looking at brain, but it's just one neuro, neuron, and it's in a house sparrow. Uh, this was a multi-step procedure that took several days and shows that FLEVA will tolerate fixation and the signal will remain strong within the cell. As long as the cell membrane remains intact, FLEVA will stay there. This researcher is creating a positive control to induce apoptosis in sparrows. And we've now had several researchers use FLEVA in birds and even injected it into embryonic chicken eggs with reasonable success. Uh, in this case, um, sterosporine was injected into the forebrain of a female house sparrow to induce apoptosis. 20 hours later, FAMPLEVO was injected IV into the jugular vein and circulated for just 30 minutes. The bird was sacrificed via transcardial perfusion with heparinized saline and paraformaldehyde. Then the brain was post-fixed for 48 hours, embedded in gelatin, cryoprotected again for 48 hours more. Then they prepared 40 micron slices of the brain on a freezing microtome, mounted onto slides, and then um, cover slipped with prolonged anti-fade mountain. Mounted. Um, the neurons with active cap spaces fluoresce green, and this is one neuron at 100x. Here's another picture of some bird, bird brain. In this experiment, the researchers wanted to know if cap spaces play a role in brain development as birds and humans use hearing and sound to learn songs and language. The cochlea is the only excitatory input into the nucleus magnocellularis, the NM, in the second order auditory neurons in the Czech brainstem. If the cochlea is removed, the birds can't hear, and this loss of simulation induces a, level of high, uh, induces a high level of apoptosis in the NM part of the brain. So here's the control. You can see overall background staining versus the apoptotic bird. FLEVO was injected 35 minutes prior to sacrifice. In the experimental chick, every auditory neuron in the deafferented neural NM is brightly stained. Cast spaces are affected in almost every neuron just six hours after the cochlear is removed. If the chick can't hear, the brain dies. 
Here is an experiment looking at rat eyes where FAMSLEVO was injected intravitreally after an optical nerve transection procedure. This is at 20x. Um, you can see there are some fluorescent spots here. Indicate those apoptotic RGCs, the retinal glial ganglial cells, that are seen in the experimental eye on the right, which are absent in the contralateral, contralateral eye on the left, which there is still some background staining you know. there. Here, fan flevo was injected IV through the femoral vein of a young rat and circulated for 30 minutes. The urinary bladder was excised, processed, and again, the nuclei were stained blue with DAPI. The majority of released urothelial cells in the urinary bladder revealed activated caspases, which indicates that apoptosis contributes to urothelial cell loss in the rat early postnatal period, which is indispensable for fast urothelial remodeling during development. Using Plevo did not induce any postmortem apoptosis artificially after killing the animal or by removing tissue from the animal. In this study, we're looking at leukocytes from bone marrow from three different mice, and then we ran them on the flow. These were C57BL and S126 mice, which were treated with morphine and LPS, top one, or just LPS only or a placebo for 48 hours. And then 45 minutes prior to sacrifice, Flevo was injected IV in the tail vein, and then the bone marrow was collected. This shows an increase in apoptosis in the bone marrow leukocytes of morphine-treated animals that were also exposed to LPS. Our next Flevo kit uses red fluorescence. It uses sulforotamine B, which is red, and excites around 550 and emits at about 600 nanometers. Again, this is one of our earliest experiments, like we saw earlier, using FAM Flevo and the window chamber model. Um, in this case, we labeled two different SCK tumors with SR Flevo. The control mouse on the left was given a placebo versus the experimental mouse on the right was treated with arsenic trioxide to induce apoptosis. Three hours later, after they received ATO, SR Flevo was injected and histological sections were made and visualized on a fluorescence microscope. Uh, these are 20X pictures. Again, we can easily see that the chemotherapy is working because dying apoptotic tumor cells turn red. We can also specifically identify which tumor cells are dying. In addition to tumors and brains, Flevo works in many other tissues also. In this experiment, researchers were looking at apoptosis in mouse parenchymal cells after whole lung irradiation. Mice were given either a zero or 15 whole lung dose of gamma radiation, and six hours later, SR Flevo was injected IV via the tail vein and circulated for 18 hours. Mice were sacrificed and received an intracardiac perfusion with heparinized saline followed by a zinc-buffered formalin. Then the lungs were inflated, removed, paraffin embedded, and sectioned into five micron sections. And then they're counterstained with blue DAPI to identify the nuclei. Lungs were imaged with a fluorescent microscope at 40 or 80X and then overlaid. The active caspases appear as bright red cytoplastic stain with discrete blue nuclei from DAPI. So here's your apoptotic lung cells. And here's the control injection. This one didn't receive any treatment, but this one received a lot more radiation. Here are some non-invasive images using SR Flevo and the IVA system. <laughs> There's a lot of information here. Um, in this study, human colon carcinoma cells, the Colo 205, were injected SC into three female nude mice. These are the circled tumors here. They're actually on the kind of by the neck. After 27 days, the animals were treated with a placebo control, which is the top animal, a low dose of trail, or a high dose of trail. Animals were injected with SR Flevo a couple of times at one and four hours, and images were taken before treatment and after treatment. You can see before treatment, here's the one hour, four hour, six hour, and 24 hours later. Um, the data shows that trail induces apoptosis within an hour after treatment, and the level of apoptosis significantly increases post-treatment. Those colo-205 two, tumors are being killed. They fluoresce brightly with SR Flevo compared to no treatment. 
And here's the excised tumor nodules here. This is run on an IVIS machine, I believe. Our next two kits are near-infrared. Our near-infrared 690 tracer uses a dilate tracer which excites at 690 and emits at 709. Our NIR products also include free, or they have free dye controls available which are sold separately. Uh, the free dye controls only contain the NIR fluorescent dye molecule. Both will generate a signal, but only the FLEVO tracer should bind with the active caspase. The free dye control will reveal where any of the reagent may have become trapped inside the cells, the tissues, or the body of the animal without specifically binding with an active caspase. We often see it in the liver or the kidneys and at the site of the injection. This image was taken using a Lycor Pearl small animal imager using NIR 690 uh, on the 700 channel. This is a Diffie tumor xenograft, which is a colorectal cancer cell line grown on the flank of an athymic nude mice. It was injected via retroorbital injection. These pictures are from an IVIS in vivo imaging system, which is now Perkin Elmer. In this experiment, researchers are looking at brain abscesses following a staph infection. So they did intracerebral inoculations of live staph aureus into the brain to induce, to induce an abscess in mice. 17 hours after the infection, the NIR 690 or the free dye control was injected IV and then imaged an hour later from brain tissues ex vivo using an IVIS. There is um, strong caspase activity, you can see that, w w associated with the brain abscesses that you can see on the right versus there is minimal signal detected on the animals injected with just the free dye control on the left. There are very low backgrounds using NIR 690. This picture is from a care stream in vivo FX Pro imager. Adult wild type valve sea mice were either given a control, which is one and two here, or an intranasal inoculation with the HSV1 virus, which is just the bottom animal here. Uh, the virus is absorbed through the epithelium and is known to induce apoptosis in the brain, which you can clearly see right here. Seven days later, at the peak of infection, the mice were injected IV in the tail vein without any reagent, that would be number one, or with the NIR flevo, which is this control, and our experimental animal. And they were imaged four hours later. So you let the reagent circulate for four hours. Uh, again, we see strong caspase activity in the brain of the animal treated with the infection, right here, animal number three. And then we see minimal signal detected here in the liver of the mice injected with NIR 690. So this one here is not infected, but we do see some background staining with the NIR. This one received uh, so the so what we're seeing here is kind of the liver as the route of clearance for these SIBO tracers. There's no signal at all from the uninfected control, and therefore this mouse number two reveals some background staining. And this is the image from the title page. Like we saw earlier, it was taken using a Lycor Pearl small animal imager using NIR747, right on the 800 channel. And it's a Diffie tumor xenograft, which again is a colorectal cancer cell line grown on the flank of an athymic nude mouth. It is administered IV, I'm sorry, administered via a retroorbital injection. The last kit I'll talk about is our NIR 747, which excites at 747 and emits at 776. And like our uh, NIR 690 kit, we also have a free dye control, which is sold separately. These pictures are from CRI's Maestro imaging system. These images, images show DU145 pancreatic tumor cells grown on valve C uh, new new mice for 14 days. The top mouse was injected with NIR 747 up here, 
while the bottom mouse was given just the free dye control. They were imaged four hours after injection. The tumors are revealed on the top, which just really didn't show up very well in this picture, which I circled, while both images, uh, while the bottom images show kind of the free dye control kit in the kidney and the tail vein injection site. Similar to the early experiment we did with NIR690 and the HSV1 infection, which you can see right here in the brain, here it is in color using NIR747 and includes the 747 free dye control. As you can see, any of the animals that received the, either the free dye or the region itself have it uh, fluoresce in the tail vein. Um, in this experiment, these are adult wild-type valve sea mice. They're given a control, one and two. Um, or the intranasal inoculation with the HSV1 virus here and here. And again, that's absorbed through the epithelium and is known to induce apoptosis in the brain. Seven days later, at the peak of infection, the mice were injected IV in the tail vein with NIR747, which is number one, and number four, or no reagent, which is number two, or the 747 free dye control, which is image number three. So this one here, you'll see background stating with the free dye control. And they were imaged seven hours later using a care stream in vivo FX Pro Imager. We can see strong activity, strong cast base activity located in the brain of the animal treated with the HSV1 and injected with NIR 747. There's minimal signal detected again in the liver of the animal injected with a free dye control and the uninfected mouse injected with NIR 747. So um, the liver is the route of clearance here for these flevo tracers. And again, all three of the mice that were injected with some reagent uh, reveal red tails as the reagent is likely to pool after IV injection. For our last experiment, these pictures were taken with a, with a CRI Maestro imaging system using NIR747 to non-invasively monitor the efficacy and time kinetics of an experimental anti-cancer drug. After the animals received a placebo control here on the left or an experimental drug on the right, um, these are xenograft M-nude tumor-bearing mice, mice uh, with Miapaca pancreatic tumors, and they were injected IV with NIR747, and then imaged non-invasively at various time points, and the tumors were excised. So here we're showing the data at uh, 22 hours. Um, there's three mice shown in the pictures above, and down at the bottom we have some excised tumors actually from five mice. And the apoptotic tumor tissues fluoresce bright blue here in these experimental mice on the right, indicating that the drug had an apoptotic effect effect and was killing the tumor. And then we quantified this. And here are the different time points. Um, the pictures here in blue, these are at hour 22, and here are some of the other time points that were taken. There is maximum cast base activity was seen around six hours. In summary, FLEVO is a simple yet accurate method to detect cast base activity in vivo. It detects apoptosis in living tumor tissue, and we can quantitate cast base positive cells. We can detect temporal and spatial occurrence of cell death, help optimize pharmacokinetics with minimal nonspecific binding, and maximum image contrast. Non-invasive monitoring and quantitation of apoptosis is possible. Once optimized for clinical setting, FLEVO could be used to determine if chemotherapy is working or not, even within a few hours of receiving treatment. This would enable doctors to quickly find the most effective treatment while minimizing bad side effects from ineffective treatment to reduce patient suffering and, of course, eventually lower health care costs. We hope you give FLEVO a try. We're glad to help you as you plan out your project or work through an experiment. And to learn more about our products and services, please visit our website. We have many resources available to help you. You can find webinars such as this one on a wide variety of topics. Um, 
and we have all the product manuals, certificates of analysis, data sheets. And if you have specific questions, please don't hesitate to contact us directly. We really love hearing how you are using the products and helping troubleshoot your experiments. That's how we gathered a lot of the data that you see here today. Let's really thank those researchers who shared their data with us so we can help you learn more about Flevo. Uh, and now we'll take some questions. Allison says we have quite a few questions from the chat box. Do we have time for a few? Thanks, Sally. Thanks to everyone who submitted questions. We do have a time to answer. A few, we do have time to answer a few of them. Uh, the first question: How much does it cost? Oh, well, that's an easy one since uh, since we have the screenshot right here. Um, it actually costs about two hundred dollars to inject six animals, or five hundred dollars to do twenty-four animals. Uh, contact us if you're going to do larger studies. Uh, we tried to make Flevo really affordable for everybody's research budget. Awesome. The second question, when should I inject? Uh, okay, so you should really plan your experiment so that you can inject Flevo at, a, at the time when you think cast-based activity is expected to be occurring in your animal. Well, as we saw in our last experiment, they saw maximum cast-based activity at about six hours, and it may be necessary to set up some initial experiments to determine when and how much Flevo to inject as you know, the resulting positive signal is a direct measurement of the caspase activity that occurred at the time of injection. And the amount of flevo might need to be adjusted to accommodate whatever research model you're doing. Um, you're really looking for the window of time when caspases will be uh, activated. Okay. And about how long should it circulate? Um, flevo should be circulated within the animal for at least 15 minutes. Um, I think one of our early examples with the lung tissue, they only let it um, circulate in for 10 minutes. Um, after about 60 minutes, m most of the unbound flebo will have cleared from the bloodstream. And we have some people who have and imaged it after several hours, like 6 hours, 15 hours, 22 hours, or even some days. Generally, the longer the reagent circulates, the lower the background signal. However, we'll have some positive cells, which you know could be apoptotic or pyroptotic, may eventually be lost over time as their cell membrane breaks down, and then it distributes the signal back into the, um, the bloodstream. Flevo will remain inside cells containing active caspases as long as that cell membrane remains intact. Um, and what we find is with the NIR reagents, they'll clear from that circulating bloodstream, again, within about an hour, and start to clear the liver and kidneys in about three to four hours. Well, great, Sally. Thanks so much. That's about all the time we have for questions today. If we were unable to answer your questions or if you have further questions, please email us at help at immunochemistry.com. We will send our webinar recording within the week. Again, if you have questions or if you have ideas for future webinars, please email us at help at immunochemistry.com. Thank you for joining us and have a great day. Thanks, Allison, and thanks everybody for listening.